in the rain. And then you actually go pee and find another piece. Yeah, with all of these seashells in it. <gasps> Didn't. Oh my gosh, look at that, how cool is that? Hey everybody, and welcome back to Ellie Knows Rocks. Today, I am standing at the top of Riley's Canyon, looking for Riley's Canyon red horned coral in Utah. We have made quite the trip to get here, and we're gonna take you along on our small journey. This was not an easy place to find in any way. It, we are hot and sweating, the elevation is killing me, but boy, we're here. We can't wait to start looking for stuff. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure, and let's go see what we find. in the rain we pulled over on like a random road and we can camp out here so this is like dispersed camping um you can camp out here for 14 days at a time not that we're gonna be that long but for free for free so um yes i mean we are we're tired from digging all day digging fossils all day and in the morning we're gonna dig for red horned coral we gotta find camping and it's rainy <laughs> Oh, we're gonna do it though. Oops. Okay, I, I gotta, I gotta drive. Can dinner? Let's go. Got the tent. <laughs> the tent. We in the rain. I know, we're it's fun. Rain. <laughs> Adventures. All right, we survived last night camping in the rain, a little bit cold, all of that kind of stuff, and now we're headed up a tiny trail right here in front of us off of this little tiny road, I think it's the 34, by the Provo River in Utah. I can put, I'll put the description, I'll put the coordinates where we're going if we end up finding something, but we're going up there to find red horn coral. So this would be fossilized coral that is, I guess, kind of agatized. I'm just hoping that we find it. And supposedly we're supposed to walk up what is an old road? Clearly we can't drive. This is where the directions are taking us. So fingers crossed. It is like, there is water and bugs. It's got good limestone, but yeah. Mosses, grasses, we needed freaking bug spray today. But this is the trail so far. We're taking the left fork in Riley's Canyon right now. We are in the thick of it. Yeah. It is. Yeah. We are following a little cow trail. <sighs> yeah, hopefully we get there. But there's a lot of red rock all over the ground. Very, very red jasper looking rock. I don't think that's what we're looking for at all. But you can see, very red. I've collected a couple pieces because they're neat, but we're still moving onward. You guys were on the trail and I just found this guy. This is the, a portion of the, the red coral and Candace found one too. Isn't that cool? It's right here in the limestone. These are a lot bigger pieces than I expected. There might be more in here. I'm moving because of the bees. Wow, this is awesome. Oh my gosh, did you find one? <gasps> Holy crap, she found a whole one. This is better than even going to the spot. I mean, here's this little guy. Oh my gosh, I found one too. Look at him. Look, look, look. Oh, how cute. Look how cool that is. Wow. Oh my goodness sake, I can't even believe it. We're not even to the spot the yet. Heck? Holy wow, cow. Wow, that beautiful piece. Oh my gosh. Oh, there's another one. What the heck? Yes. Oh, here's another small one. Really flat, teeny tiny one. Wow. Oh, here's another one. About an inch. 
you guys, I can't even believe this. We were told, well, I mean told as in like reading the book that they're, they're very rare. They're extremely hard to find and that you might not find them coming up here and we're finding them on the ground already. This is awesome. <gasps> okay, this right there, another big fat one, kind of short and stubby, but holy crap. <laughs> Freak it out. This is so cool. Wow. Oh my gosh. I have to show you guys this one before I pick it up. It's just here in, in this soft dirt. And there it is. It's just popped out. You can see it still has like the actual horn on top. And it's that beautiful red color. This is, these aren't them, but this is amazing so far. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it. Guys, check this out. Candace just found this one. I didn't. Oh my gosh, look at that, how cool is that? Oh my gosh, you are finding so many, this is amazing. This is amazing. Everybody, there's another one, look at how fat he is. Wow, I don't know the quality of these um, as far as if they're gonna be really great or not because we're not to like the main source yet, but these, these all came from the main source, so. <gasps> what? Oh my goodness sake. <laughs> Look at this. Look how big it is. Oh my gosh. Wow. That is amazing. That's a good one. Holy cow. Oh. That's amazing. Yeah, keep your eye out for those white ones. Okay, with the little guys. Look at that. Look at how fat he is and how dark red it is. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. Like, holy crap. I am, I am freaking out. This is, <laughs> this, is so this is so great. This whole area, whoops, there goes my sunglasses. Redo. This whole area used to be a, a like a submarine basin and not like submarines, but submarine. So not like fully oceanic. And so coral used to grow in this area along with a multitude of other critters, but the coral is what got taken over by microcrystalline quartz to create the horned coral or the red horned coral that we see today. So it's essentially like agate, but without the banding. So it's a microcrystalline quartz pseudomorph of horned coral. You can polish it, it shines up beautifully, and it was all growing on the limestone. Just as if you were to go scuba diving today or go to an ocean and you see coral growing off of those big rocks, the rocks it's growing off of is limestone. It gets enough calcium from those rocks, it gets a ton of other stuff that it needs. And right now, we're just in an open area where it has eroded from up the hill down to here. We're still gonna go up that trail and see if we can find some more further on up, but we're gonna search this area a little bit longer. Look at this, guys. Isn't that amazing? Wow, this is real Riley Canyon red horn coral. <laughs> oh, that has some, I think in the center. These guys, Candace found a brachiopod that's of the same material. Isn't that wild? Oh my gosh. It looks like a piece of coral on the other side, but that's crazy. Did you find some? No, just a red. We just hiked up from down, way, way down there. We came up off this hill. It's like a little shack here. I'm climbing up these white rocks. I am winded and I'm tired, but oh, there's something red. You did? Oh, you found a good one. Check this out. Oh, that's that's part of one. Sweet. So, I think we found the spot. Mine looks kind of crappy. Oh, wow, look at Candace's. Oop, that's amazing. Jeez, you're just good luck. You need to stop looking. Can you close your eyes? Yeah. <laughs> Definitely getting to the top of the hill has been quite the feat for us. And I'm gonna take the road back down that is less in the like bushes because they freak me out. There's a lot of bees 
I just kind of don't want to go back into them. But we're going to hang out here for a little bit and then we definitely have to head down the hill because when it says a mile and a half hike, definitely a mile and a half hike from way down there. And our campsite was way over there yesterday. It's our last night in the rain. These are all slick lines or slickened lines on this limestone from a fault. Two pieces would have rubbed against each other and it looks like uh, before they were rubbing against each other, they had some Jasper that came in and filled in these little areas. That's pretty cool. Look at the slick lines in these limestone. Isn't that awesome? And then you've got just some red nodules. This actually could be a, a coral that's in there. I should get the rock hammer and break that open and see. Um, it could also just be one of those weird red nodules. The slick lines are really cool. Get that. Um, this is coral in here. And you can see like the little fossil imprints and how pretty and red that is. Isn't that beautiful? This is a cross section of a shell that's made out of the same red material. And then we've got this over here. It shows just some fossilized shells all the way across in this band of limestone. So when all of the shells were dying off and they were sinking to the bottom, they were eventually covered with sediments of a powdered limestone, essentially, or calcium carbonate and it turned into the sedimentary rock limestone. Preserved these seashells perfectly. As it preserved them, silica rich fluid started to kind of percolate through the rock. It turned these seashells hard with microcrystalline quartz. And so that's why you get these perfectly fossilized seashells in layers like this. Look at the imprint on that guys. You've got some of the red coral on the imprint, but it's just a trace amount. But it still looks pretty neat. Look at all the little baby pieces. Like this is a, not exactly what we're looking for, but all these little teeny tiny pieces of coral. Um, yeah, pretty cute, right? Like just little bitty ones. I'm not even sure that that is one, to be honest. Look, a little tiny crinoid stem. He's like super tiny in comparison to like my finger, but it's still adorable. Look guys, I finally found one round one in this rock. It's not even very big. It's just, you can see the red. It's in the limestone. And it, it doesn't even go all the way through, but at least I finally found a red one instead of just like these little bitty pieces I've been picking up everywhere. I mean, this place has been gone through to death. Like, I don't, maybe this is part of one. Yeah, maybe. I don't think this is one. I think that's just a nodule, but man, oh man, what a, what a pain. Oh, that's just a piece of coral with no red. And then I don't know if these are coral or not, or just garbage. This is a really long crinoid stem. Check it out. That's a good one. And then there was this guy that I saw. And look at that. Pretty sure that's one. Yep, look at that, that's a horned coral. <gasps> Check that out, I found one. Well, searching around, but I did find one. <gasps> cool. What's this? Now, this red horned coral is extremely rare. As you can see, we have several different types of fossils in this area. We've got the little crinoid stems. We've got just fossilized stem coral. And then we have the red horned coral. Now the red horned coral is the only thing that's red plus some seashells. So that would indicate that there was a very, very specific environmental deposition and condition that was going on to make the red horned coral red horned coral. So I'm assuming that this is the theory. But at this time, the earth could have been changing so rapidly that instead of having a grayish coral like we normally see as a fossil, 
mineralization that was coming in through the silicate minerals was abundant in rich iron. And that could have been from volcanic eruptions, that could have been from just a seafloor spreading, plant decay or organic decay. Uh, there's a lot of factors that could affect why some of the coral that's red and some of it that is just regularly gray. You're not gonna believe me. Candace can just attest. Candace, what just happened? You said, I hope I get lucky while going, ah, and you pick up a giant, beautiful rock. Well, so well, what I said is every time I go pee, I get really lucky and I look down and I find a piece of red horn coral, a big fat one, about that long. It's in my bag, I'll show you. But I just went and peed. I'm not gonna show you the wet spot on the ground. You'll have to believe me. But I look behind me while I'm peeing and this, this, is what I found. No joke. Like, wow. I think it's like half red, but it's a fatty. And that's pretty freaking cool. Like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So I'm always lucky when I go to pee. What the, what's wrong with that? There's something wrong with that. Look at this rock. It's got like the red seashell on it. It's been fossilized. I'm scraping around it. I'm gonna dig it up. It's a little bit bigger than I thought it was gonna be. Doing this one handed and filming is. Oh, I guess I could have given it to you. Uh, didn't think about it. Oh, look at that. Okay, I'm definitely gonna take it, break it, but it's got two really cool shells in it, which that's that's awesome. Look at all the aspen trees. I want some. They won't survive in Havasu, it's too hot. But I want some, this is beautiful. So this is the road to go up, guys. Like this is the track that we're leaving on because like going up that other way, a little sketchy, really, really intensely like wooded, lots of bugs, lots of things that were stabbing us. I have stuff all over my legs, but this is a little bit better way. Oh, I had an amazing time. <laughs> we found so many cool things. <laughs> I don't want to leave. Oh. I think it was awesome that you got so lucky saying you needed a pee. And then you actually go pee and find another piece. <laughs> Two lucky pieces. <laughs> I'm going to make you pee every five minutes. <laughs> that was an amazing end to a spectacular hike. I mean, it was right by my backpack the whole time. But I had to mention that I had to go pee in order to find the rock. Moral of the story, drink a lot of water. <laughs> we headed down the trail extremely satisfied and ready to go home. And once I got home, this is what I did with my coral pieces. I got them on the cabbing machines. I wasted no time in seeing exactly what these beauties were going to look like. So I took them through the ringer and polished up four of them. And I did this all at my local lapidary shop in Lake Havasu. And just to make sure they had an amazing glossy finish, I hit them real fast with the 50,000 grit. And here we are for the big reveal. What do you guys think? Which one is your favorite and why? To me, they look like little brains. And it's amazing how you can see the very, very red chalcedony and then the clear chalcedony that kind of filled in all the spaces. I'm absolutely in love with them. I hope that you guys have enjoyed every bit of this. This has been an awesome trip. I can't believe we found so many cool specimens. They polished up beautifully. They're gonna make some amazing jewelry and I'm probably gonna have a few on my Etsy so you guys should check those out. Thank you so much once again for joining me on this adventure and I'll see you on the next one.